Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com, and welcome to the free report for Monday, September 16th, 2019. Free pick coming up in just a moment. First, a quick note, if you have yet to become a member over at DocSports.com, just want to give it a trial run, it is a cool way to do so. You click on the link below this video, get set up for a free $60 account. You can use those free 60 bucks on any of my daily packages or anybody else for that matter over at DocSports.com. It's as simple as that. Free $60 trial run at DocSports.com. Free $60 account. And again, all you got to do is click on the video to get started. Going to tell you about our free pick coming up between the Browns and the Jets in just a moment. And uh, we're also going to tell you what's going on for us over the next couple of days with our premium picks over at DocSports.com. But we do have to report the bad with the good. And yesterday was bad in the NFL for me. Uh, we've had those kind of weeks few and far between over the past five or six years. When they hit, they don't feel good. And that's what happened to us yesterday. Sure didn't help us that two of our four plays uh, that we had on Sunday, uh, we suffered injuries to our starting quarterbacks in the first half. First quarter with Drew Brees, second quarter with Ben Roethlisberger. And uh, obviously you're not going to win or cover too many point spreads when you're a close dog or a favorite uh, when you got your backup quarterbacks out there. Just a, a rough day. Uh, we won on Saturday. We had the six-star winner, of course, the top play winner with Central Florida. We told you about that already. We lost on Sunday, and we lost the top play with the Tennessee Titans. Up 17-13, they couldn't stop Jacoby Brissett. Give Brissett credit. Went down the field, got the final score, and got the win for his Indianapolis Colts. Uh, so it was a rough day. Lost in, in a NFL 0-1 in baseball. Our saving grace on Sunday was yet another NASCAR win. We've just been red hot since early May. 8-1 uh, our last nine NASCAR bets and 15-4 and is the current one with our last 19 and we're up about $5,000 for $100 per unit betters. Yesterday in NASCAR, uh, we won another matchup. We had uh, Larson over uh, Eric Jones. Eric Jones had a rough outing, kind of like we did in the NFL, uh, out of it from the start. And, uh, and then Kyle Larson was able to get the victory. He had a top 10 finish. Eric Jones wrecked early and finished around 35th or so. So an easy win, uh, but overall, bad day. Uh, we got to move on. That's the way we do it. And we're still on a nice run in the NFL, 62-41. Couple of pushes along the way. Uh, so still over 60% win winners with our last 100 plus NFL plays. Uh, we do build off college football with the winning Saturday. And here's the deal. Last year, we really kicked it into gear in week three college football week three NFL well we won week three college football and now we'll look to win this coming week week three in the NFL we've had one winning week which was week one in the NFL and one losing week which was yesterday uh, and again I don't want to keep going on and on about it but I want to let you guys know uh, that we don't always win and I hope nobody ever feels like we're trying to project that because we don't yesterday was a, a definite losing day for me no excuses in any way, shape, or form. But it is Monday, and it's time to move on. And we do have our college football opening line report, as we do every Monday. Before I get to that, a quick note, I am in baseball action on Monday's card. We do have one play in Major League Baseball over at DocSports.com. It'll be available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. As far as the WNBA, we'll go into Tuesday's card, which is the next WNBA card. They're off on Monday. They're right in the middle of the playoffs. Best of five, series coming up and we'll have Tuesday action in the WNBA and again we'll be on runs of 16 and 6 42 21 and 2 in the WNBA let's get to that uh, opening line report and then we'll get to the free pick in Monday Night Football between the Browns and the Jets as always we're talking about games that have moved a good two and a half to three points at least circa with the opening lines and then how they got hit in some of those games and so far by the way if you took those three point or more line moves that we've talked about the first couple of weeks that Circa has been providing the opening lines weeks two and weeks three in college football you'd be hitting about 57 percent riding those coattails so here we go Let's start first with a Friday night game, seeing some action, some movement. Uh, USC hosting Utah. The game opened pick. Utah and that stout defense has been bet up to three and a half on Sunday evening, and we don't disagree with that right now as far as the line movement is concerned. Not sure we have a play. We haven't had one yet on that game. We'll see a little bit later in the week, and we'll tell you if we have one uh, on Friday's video or on Thursday's video, actually. Uh, UL Lafayette is at Ohio. We had UL Lafayette week one against Mississippi State. It was an easy cover. They were getting about 20. Uh, 
Uh, and they ended up losing the game by 10 points. They got the cover for us. Ohio off the cover against the Marshall Thundering Herd. This line opened Ohio 6.5 at home over UL Lafayette. That number down to 3. Nebraska opened 7.5 at Illinois. Illinois, while well, they were kind of showing what they really truly are after winning their first couple of the games against outman competition. Uh, they get whacked this past week. And Nebraska opened 7.5 in Champaign, Illinois. And they are currently a 10.5 point favorite at Circa. And listen, Nebraska uh, got the big win and the cover against Northern Illinois the other day uh, in Lincoln just poured it on in the second half and won the game 44 to 8 great game by the Husker defense as far as that offensive line still some concerns they did kind of wear down Northern Illinois late in the game but they're still having a rough time running the ball between the tackles real young on that interior offensive line because of their redshirt freshman center who used to be a tight end they got a lot of faith in this kid as he moves forward and as he gets a year or two under his belt but they're still having a rough time running the ball between the tackles. Don't know if that's going to hurt him against Illinois, but I bet it hurts him again a couple of times throughout the Big Ten portion of the season. They're now in conference play, of course, but Nebraska has gone again from a 7.5 point favorite up to a 10.5 point favorite. Temple gets the win outright over Maryland. We had Temple plus the points for our uh, one of our premium picks on Saturday over at DocSports.com. They opened 10.5 at Buffalo. Temple bet up to 13.5. Uh, also, let's go down to game 357 358 on the schedule. Georgia State, you remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, they were able to get the win over Tennessee and then got routed next time out by Western Michigan uh, this past week, and they gave up close to 700 yards to Western Michigan. Georgia State's at Texas State. Georgia State opened a one-point favorite. Texas State, now the favorite at two and a half, and I think Texas State's about ready to go off against somebody, guys. Uh, they have played Texas A&M, Wyoming, and SMU, so a step down in level of competition for the Bobcats cats of texas state and i think they're going to get the win in this one i think that line move has gone the right way going from a one point dog at home to georgia state to a two and a half point favorite LSU and that new up-temple RPO style offense is going to take on Vanderbilt. Uh, that game on the road for LSU, they moved from a 19-point opening line road favorite up to 23. Uh, LSU and this new offense, 165 points so far in three games, including that 45-point uh, showing against Texas a couple of weeks ago. Uh, skip down to game 379-380. SMU at TCU. I think this number has been moving in the right direction. TCU opened 13 and a half. They are now 10 and a half at home to Southern Methodist. You know, TCU's off the big win over Purdue. Purdue didn't have their starting quarterback. Uh, give them credit anyway. They held Purdue to eight first downs and just over 200 yards. But again, uh, Purdue without their top quarterback. As far as Southern Methodist is concerned, they're getting it done through the air and on the ground. 49 passes SMU threw in game one. And then last week, they ran for 390 yards. They can get it done on the ground. They can get it done through the air. And that early sharp money saw the money come in on SMU. SMU. Again, they went from plus 13 and a half down to 10 and a half. I happen to agree. Uh, with that movement. Arkansas open 18 at home to San Jose State. They are up to 21. San Jose, as you know, one of the worst FBS programs out there. Uh, all the way down to 395, 396. Nevada at Texas El Paso. This is one I'm not sure that I can agree with too much. Nevada opened 16 and a half and have been bet down to 13. Sharp money coming in on the UTEP miners, and I can't get on board with that, folks. Uh, UTEP so far, they've allowed 53 of 83 passing, 577 yards five touchdowns only one pass have they picked off in two games uh, and meanwhile Nevada got the big win over Purdue when Purdue's quarterback was healthy I know they got their butts kicked sideways up in Eugene Oregon in week two they lost 77 to 6 terrible spot for Nevada coming off uh, the big celebration after beating Purdue and then of course Oregon was off that game where they blew a lead against Auburn and they just crushed the Wolfpack but Nevada comes back this past week and they beat a good FCS Weber State program what was impressive about that was that they outgained Weber 453 to 137 very nice uh, effort on both sides of the line of scrimmage for Nevada the problem with Nevada right now is their quarterback Carson Strong he's throwing two too many interceptions 
threw a couple more against Weber this past weekend. But again, I still don't agree with that line movement. I mean, UTEP's nothing. Uh, they got barely got past Houston Baptist in week one. They had to score uh, the final points of the game about midway through the fourth quarter, kicked a field goal, beat Houston Baptist uh, by three, excuse me, by two points, 36-34. And then we went against UTEP with Texas Tech in week two. Uh, Texas Tech ended up covering by half a point, laying 34 and a half, uh, but still beat them 38 to three. And it could have been worse if Texas Tech would have cut loose in that game. But again, in this one, this is out of all of them. I just don't agree with this one. Nevada being bet down from 16 and a half down to 13 on the road against UTEP. I think Nevada uh, wins comfortably in that one. So there you go. There's our opening line report. As you can tell, not quite as as many games as we've seen the last couple of weeks as far as big moves away from the point spread and we want to talk about to you those games that have moved around three points or more and give you an idea of where the sharp action is opening day every single uh, Monday morning. We're going to talk about that on our videos throughout the college football season. And of course, you know about Tuesdays. Tuesdays videos will be all about what happened the past weekend in the NFL and what's coming up for the very next week. We'll have that at 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday. As far as Monday's free play, a quick note again, Major League Baseball, the play will be up at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific on Monday, our Major League Baseball play. Uh, WNBA returns on Tuesday. College football, NFL, CFL all return turns on Thursday and we'll tell you more about that as we get closer to the weekend. Monday's free play. It's the Monday Night Football Clash between the Browns and the Jets. We cashed last week here with uh, Houston and we're going to look to make it two straight out of the blocks uh, with Monday Night Football and we're going to play the uh, over in this one. It's sitting at 45. It dropped down a little bit of course with Darnold and the Mono uh, situation and down all the way to 43 in some books back up to 45 and here's the thing man. I think Cleveland's going to have to get it going offensively obviously. Uh, I know Odell's a little bit banged up. He's listed as probable but I think this team's got to air it out stretch the defense a little bit and for that New York Jets defense they've lost a couple of key players. They're not going to have Quentin Williams it looks like. He's listed as out for this one. They're not could have C.J. Mosley, linebacker, uh, the New York Jets for this one. He's listed as out. You're talking about two key cogs in this New York Jets defense. And Trevor Simeon, of course, is going to be the starter in place of Sam Donald. Obviously, Simeon's been around NFL circles for a while. Hasn't started for a couple of years. You'll remember he played with the Denver Broncos at one point. But uh, listen, I think they've got to open up. I don't think they can play safe football with their defensive injuries and hope to get a win. So I think they got to open things up a little bit on offense, even though they have a back up to Darnold in the mix. Even though Quincy and Noon was out, he's got the injury. Uh, it's just a banged up football team, but that line adjustment to six and a half keeps us off the side. I do think it's going to be a little bit higher scoring game than that total says. So uh, we're going to recommend a play on over 45 in Monday Night Football between the Browns and the Jets. It's going to do it for us for Monday. Listen, if you like these videos, click on that thumbs up button or be sure to subscribe. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Let's put Monday in the win column right back here Tuesday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific. We'll have our NFL Week 2 update, a recap, I should say, at that very time. Best of luck on Monday. Okay.